G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a little preview of the upcoming ICC Cricket World Cup final. This is a tournament I have been following pretty religiously because I've had the opportunity to just chuck it on in the background every day. And uh, it is sad that it's coming to an end, but India versus Australia, this is... I don't know if my memory is failing me here, but it feels like one of the more one-sided World Cup finals or heavily favourited World Cup finals. Does that make sense? One team is so heavily favourited, it feels like that, that I can remember it a long time. So this will be... It's the eighth time Australia has been in a, in a World Cup final. I've been watching cricket since 2002, so this is the third final I've seen us in. And in 03, we smashed India, the same opponent. In 07, we beat Sri Lanka in a rain-affected game. And this time, I feel like it's the inverse of back then in 03 and 07, you know, the golden era of Australian cricket. We were such a champion side. We went undefeated in both of those World Cups that now it's the flip where we're coming up against a huge giant at the moment on current form India, uh, you know, a very, very strong team. And it must be like what it would have been for Sri Lanka to take on us in the 2007 World Cup final. Uh, we go into this game as pretty big underdogs. So I, I did catch both semi-finals, although um, I didn't cover either of them on the channel because I was too busy making other content. But India were dominant in their semi-final win over New Zealand. They made 397. They had two centuries from Kohli, who notched up his 50th ODI century going past Sachin Tendulkar. He's a champion. And uh, Aya as well. I hope I'm saying that right. I, I read a lot of scorecards and I watch a lot of the games on mute. Both of those guys made great tons and uh, neither of them won man of the match. Such is the, the team dominance that India has right now. They're so well-rounded. Um, you know, I've made a comment about them in my last video on cricket. And, uh, you know, three, three of their bowlers go at under four and over in this tournament, if I'm not mistaken, still. And uh, Mohamed Shami is laying claim to being one of India's best ODI bowlers ever. His average, a bowling average is under 10. It was under 10 before this game, and in the semi-final, it took 7 for 57. And, um, you know, is now the leading wicket-taker of the tournament now that Zamba went wicketless. And as a mix, as a team, India are one of the most formidable ODI teams, that are particularly in their home conditions where they play really well. This is going to take a monumental effort. So we'll explore to what extent do we think Australia are a chance to win this final. As for Australia's semi-final, uh, this was a really pleasing result to overcome a team that had given us a cricketing lesson in the second game of this World Cup. They made 311, and uh, what do we get? Like 171 in reply, 140 run win. It's pretty dominant. We flicked a switch since then. We haven't been perfect. We've been patchy, as I've covered in my most recent cricket video. But to some extent, we've shown a lot of character and a lot of growth. And I think the pleasing thing, as we chase down this uh, this total of 211 or uh, 212. We chased it down with three wickets in hand. And I think the pleasing thing out of the semi-final was the strengths and, and where we played well and then the contributors were all the inverse of um, the, what has been true up to the, that point in the tournament. So I made a video about how maybe we're a little bit top heavy in some areas, probably getting too many contributions or too much contribution from too few. And it felt like the people that had been struggling, the players that had been struggling up to this point, uh, produced a pretty good semi-final. Specifically, you know, Mitch Stark was great with the ball. Wonderful opening spell along with Josh Hazelwood. Travis Head also had his best game of the tournament with a uh, man of the match performance as well. And a couple of wickets on a turning deck uh, was timely. They were really important wickets. So overall, um, there's there's got to be some belief and confidence going into this final. Uh, but gee, India have been, they're obviously undefeated. They won 10 out of 10. They have to make it 11 out of 11 to be World Cup champions for the second time in 12 years. To rattle off a few stats about their dominance. So Virat Kohli is the leading uh, run scorer of this tournament. He's averaging over 100. This is ludicrous. Um, he's obviously just hit his 50th ODI century as well. Mohamed Shami is a top, top wicket taker and his average is under 10. That, that's insane. But more so just as a, as a broader team, India have not really been seriously challenged at any point in this particular tournament. So apparently when they've been chasing, they've won and at least had four wickets in hand in all of those performances. And only New Zealand in the semi-final, if I'm not mistaken, have gotten within 100 runs chasing an Indian total. They fell 70 runs short. And uh, while that, for a while there, that semi-final looked like New Zealand had a sneaky chance of taking it from India after a patchy start, 
they still fell 70 runs short. So this is a very, very strong team that we've got to overcome in tough conditions and is going to be a fanatical, fanatical Indian crowd. And the key to Australia performing well in this final is, well, they've got to do that old cliche of silence in the crowd. And the way to do that is to start really well. Even if they start outstandingly well, we know the Indian crowd's gonna be large, but we have to sort of quell that influence a little bit. And um, most notably, I think, the new ball pairing of Stark and Hazelwood and to, a lesser ex- well, to an even extent Cummins, they need to strike early. The new ball bowling combination, bowling with a new ball and not letting the batsman get set, we need to rip through their top order. That is the best avenue, in my opinion, of Australia launching an upset win here. I can't see us chasing a huge total of 380 because if we don't rip through that top order of Rohit Sharma, etc., Virat Kohli in the middle order, then I think a total of 380, depending on the pitch conditions, is very, very achievable for this Indian side. So it has to be a well-rounded performance. And, uh, you know, their, their ability to play spin is not going to be a huge issue, as good as Zamp has been in this tournament. Not a great semi-final, but overall, he's been very, very good. With the quality of their bowling attack too, I just don't have the faith that if we let India pack on 350 plus or even 300 plus in this final, that we're going to have the tools to be able to get it done with guys like Ashwin and Jadeja, particularly in that middle order and Shami at the front, I I have my doubts. I have my doubts. So that is the best avenue. Uh, whether we bat first or bowl, uh, bowl first, we need to rip through that bo- uh, top order and really restrict their runs. This is not a game where we can simply rely on our top order like David Warner firing or a magical Glenn Maxwell performance. Sure, it would help, but this is going to take a well-rounded team effort And um, I'm intrigued to see how we go because many had written us off after the first two games and we came back with a real fire in the belly. It has to be said that there seems to be a a sign of strength and resolve and character around this Australian cricket team since those first two losses. So I'm proud of the performances so far. To make a World Cup final in India, I think is a very satisfactory um, achievement. I think we have achieved something already. But obviously, when you're in a final, you've got to try and win one. So I'm praying that uh, we can put a a really good performance because a a World Cup win in India against this team would be a serious achievement. And we fell pretty far short in the first time we played them, only making 199. And even in that game, we actually did root through their top order. We had them three wickets for two runs and uh, they won the game by six wickets. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to offer my prediction now. I am going to say it is either an India win by six wickets or a 75 run win. So not feeling too optimistic, but I'm happy we're in the final. And anything better than that will be a nice bonus. But come on, Australia. Let me know in the comment section what your predictions are. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.